Hi, <laughs> welcome back to Just Checks Out. I am Jess, and today we are doing Elliot Brooks's giving tag. I want to say, I, I know there's a huge shadow here. I literally cannot do anything about it. It is like two o'clock in the afternoon, and this is as bright as I can get my house without it being too bright because, well, if I just show you, I think so. you can see outside. So, it's a little bit funky right now. Okay, so I was interested in this tag because I try and give back. And I'm not saying that like, haha, give me credit. I'm saying like, I try and give back because I've been in positions where I needed something and I was able to get it through people helping. And so for me, this is a huge deal and it's something I try to do whenever possible. Now, <laughs> Elliot has got the charity of her choice listed, but I have a different one. And my charity is Leftover Pets, which is a bay and neuter program that's low cost for people in a rural, in a specific rural area in Georgia. And I saw how much it needed it when I needed to help when I lived there. And I was helping the feral cats because I don't think I've talked about it too much because it's kind of a... It's a thing for me right now, but I used to take care of feral cats and trying to deal with the population and everything else is a huge deal and they do get grants and so they will help, you know, they will help you get things done and they also raise money and to me that's important because community cats and feral cats kind of have a bad reputation, but it's a reputation they have not earned. It's a reputation that was kind of thrust upon them and I hate that. So I, I'd like to give them a little bit more credit. And also they saved my life. Like legitimately there were times where I was going to unlive myself, to put it mildly. And taking care of the cats is the only thing that kept me here. Not my, my then fiance, now husband, family, nothing. It was the animals. And so I'm very deeply tied to this charity in that way. And I wanted to talk about it because they also raise money for people to feed the, fer the feral cats and the community cats and that can get kind of expensive. I was doing it on my part-time turned full-time but no one told me job. <laughs> anyway, and so when I was doing that, uh, it was kind of expensive. It was like, you know, at least like 20 bucks a week and so they get these big bags and they help, especially like there's a lot of elderly people that need help, aging people, and people that are, when I say elderly, I mean like frail, like they, they can't lift these bags up. So they will take them to, you know, their house, they will help them out, they will help trap the, the cats, and they will keep the colonies down, and it just, it's a huge thing for me. It's called Letter of Pets, I will have the information in the description below. They're constantly raising up money for sources. And they do any dog under 50 pounds. They just don't have the space anymore because there was a lot of political brouhaha during the uh, <laughs> pandemic. And, and so it just, it's, oh, it was a whole thing. So I'm going to put that below and that is my choice. I don't know if Elliot would like it to be anything else. But for me, I have to do that because that's who I am and what I am and how I respond. Okay. All right, so let's get to the questions, shall we? All right, I'm gonna be reading my screen this way, so if I look over sometimes, just roll with it. Okay, what's a book you could give everyone if you could? Okay, so I don't really have a direct answer for this one, but, 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 this year I have highly recommended Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Austin and Root Magic by Eden Royce. They're both middle grades, but they are so good. And they talk about different things. Like Mara from Books Like Whoa talks about Amari and the class, and there is definitely that. There's also the imagination and everything coming up. And the second book is coming out in May, so this is kind of an exciting time. Enjoy my ring light and my glasses. Sorry, <laughs> I literally can't see without them. Okay, next up. Root Magic. This is a book that has been so underserved in the like reading community, I think, and I, I don't understand why. As someone who lives in the Low Country, highly important. 
for me because obviously I'm not in the root magic system. Like that's not my community. That's not where I'm from. But if you live somewhere in the South, then you probably know a little bit about root magic, depending on what they call it. But root magic specifically has like the Hanks and the Boo Hags and so forth. And it's a very like locale area. And I just, I love it. But I also love the way that Royce put all the stuff in it. And so I keep recommending this book over and over and over again. And I will probably continue to keep recommending this book over and over and over again. So those are my two for this year. Because it could change next year. Who knows? I also really like Ariadne by Jennifer Payne. But moving on. That's another answer to another question. What's a book you couldn't give a rat's hiney about? So it's not a book. It's like three different series going on. And that is... Well, anything by Sarah J. Mass, anything like from Blood and Ash, and oh, the other one that's just like it. I don't have any interest in those. And I love fantasy romance. Like, that's totally one of my favorite subgenres and areas to reading, but <laughs> nothing seems particularly good to me. You know what I mean? There's nothing me. All right, this is a long question, so give me a moment. Given the holidays, are coming up what's a book you hope someone buys for you and then it says also if the holidays have already passed what did you hope that someone did buy for you so I actually had a little bit of a struggle doing this one I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to talk about it but I really would love <laughs> to have the hardcover of Ariadne by Jennifer Saint I told you we go right back to her I love that book have you seen it I'm gonna put it here somewhere because I want you to see this book it is so gorgeous, like the UK edition, is like the foil and the look, it feels evocative and I love that in a cover. You know, I, I'm not particular about covers, but I really loved that cover. Moving on. What is a book or series you've given up on? I struggled with this one for a minute, but then I thought about it and I had a perfect one. The Mercy Thompson series by Patricia Briggs. I loved that in the early part of this. Of the series I even wrote it into a paper I wrote about uh, alpha heroines in the like 2011 for one of my classes so I was reading a paranormal romance and urban fantasy class for my I was retaking 1102 just as a reminder course anyway so I took that and I was so into it I, I compared um bone cross I think that, yeah and uh we were reading Dark Lover by J.R. Ward, and I I was so profoundly impressed with how, you know, Briggs put it in, and I, it was a very, it was a book that mattered to me. However, I've read spoilers, and I've seen more about what's going on, and I just, I don't have any interest in it anymore. I don't like where the direction of the characters are going. I don't have any desire for it. I mean, I tried to also read Anita Blake. And I, I can't, I tried, I tried multiple books. I started out with like Cerulean Sins, which is like middle of the series. And I read the early ones. So I was like, next. So I, there are just a few book series that I kind of really don't like. Again, paranormal stuff is so my, one of my favorite Will Health things. More coming. So who's a character you wish that an author would give more time on? Another thinky question because it took me a while, but I finally decided and landed on I wish that Kendra Elliott and Melinda Lee from the Widow's Island series would talk more about Sam because I feel like she's getting left behind for Tessa and Kate. And I, and I like Tessa and Kate, don't get me wrong. But I want her to be incorporated more into the story. She's almost like not there. And I think sometimes the series suffers from... I guess you can say the series suffers from bad direction sometimes and so the romance sometimes overtakes the background and I kind of want to get a feel for the community as well not just the two women and sometimes when Sam shows up so I, I want to go with that so <laughs> the next question is what do you, what is the character you wish an author would give no <laughs> attention to or give up on giving attention to and does Elizabeth Wakefield count <laughs> as someone to give up on I think so I'm of the opinion of yes, absolutely. But you know, that's many years out of date. So I don't really have one other than her. 
seriously, I'm not saying it was a <laughs> field. And you will find that out next year because I'm actually doing a thing with um, YA. I'm planning a video on YA and I'm discussing them because I have several other books that I've been reading over the past couple months to kind of prepare for it. So, you know, just get thoughts. Okay, moving on. So, if you had to give up all of your books except one, what one would it be? Um, Okay, so this one I can't answer and for another reason. I moved from America to Germany with only two suitcases. I did not have most of the books I wanted. Thankfully, I had given some to my husband over the years, and so he just kind of was bringing them back. So I have some, like I have my noted copy of The Unbearable Lightness of Being and a couple of other ones, but I really miss the fact I couldn't keep some of the books that he bought me. And that kind of like, I just didn't have room and it's expensive to, <laughs> to take a suitcase, but I probably should have brought the suitcase because a hundred bucks is a whole lot cheaper than like, you know, 60 bucks for a small box. But anyway, so I kind of had to give up those and he bought me the house on Mango Street, which I loved when I was in college for the first time when I was like 18, 19. I, I appreciate it and loved it. And then I also had to give up a copy of Lace. So... <laughs> Lace probably doesn't mean anything to most people <laughs> in this context, but I read it when I was a teen. It was written, I think, like in the 60s. It was made into a movie in the 80s with Phoebe Cates playing a very, the, the like, um, character looking for her mother out of, like, these couple of women. And this is the one where, you know that <laughs> there's, there's a meme from a little while that says, like, which one of you bitches is my mother? That's this one. That's this one. So that's kind of, I, I love that book. It was crazy, but I loved it. And so I had to give it up. So I don't really have one that I can't give up because I had to give up so many of them, honestly. The one thing I wouldn't keep, and it's not a book, it's actually index cards that I would never give up, is my godmother's recipes they're in her handwriting and they mean a lot to me they're just so special to me i just can't imagine getting rid of them um i need to start using them more because i love to cook and she was an amazing chef so that was probably one of my not book book answers i guess in that way but it was like it was in it was those huge like you know colored cards and everything i loved it okay so what's the best bookish thing you've been given and it actually goes back to my husband. That goes back to um, House of Mango Street and Lace. That's because I only mentioned them like once or twice. And we've been dating for oh, many years by that point. And he still remembered them. And he bought them and had them shipped to me. And it, just, it meant a lot to me. Because it, it was something that... It was something bookish. And it was sweet and kind and wonderful. And it was my husband and Annette. And I love that I can say that because I have the best. I'm sorry to everybody else. I have the best. This is a man that actually edits this stuff. You can see me. That's why I said him to find, you know, Sonic running across the screen <laughs> or something like that. Because I let him play with it a little bit because he's earned that, honestly. Because I'm not editing it. And he's taking something that's very difficult for me off my plate. So... What's a book someone gave you that you wish you could give right back? Okay, so my answer is a little different. <laughs> I don't have a specific book. Like, and, you know, like, I I don't like getting, like, the Pick Me Girl books or whatever to review or whatever, but I'm fairly good about those. But some of the books that they could give back, oh, my God. Please take the Jane Austen I had to read in college away. Please. I cannot stand Jane Austen. And I know that, that that's kind of like weird to say. And I said it in my anti-TVR tag as well. But in this context, it's because I didn't care for the writing or the style or... <sighs> Everyone puts her as like the beginning of the romance. And I don't think she is. I think she's more literary fiction with some romance elements in it. Because ultimately, it's not necessarily about the romance. It's about the system that creates the romance, right? So not really my thing i don't really dig her and i refused to read her once in college <laughs> oops but the teacher understood she understood that it was just, it was something i could not do i just i could not get into her i've tried for i was in my 30s at that point so it's been a while 
and I just couldn't do it. So we're going to call that one done. <laughs> so the last one I literally have no answers on because it's name a time in a book that a character was given something really meaningful. I don't have a specific book. I do have a thing that I enjoy though, and that is when a <laughs> character inherits a property, right? Like, so they, you know, their great aunt dies or they're wanting to retire, so they're like, oh, here, you have the property, stuff like that. I love that. I, It's like, it's very common in women's fiction and in some like cozy mysteries, and I just, I kind of enjoy that. I like the element of it honest so that's my answer for that i don't have a specific book but i really enjoy that that like grabbing someone and letting changing their lives by a simple act of changing what they know so there's a couple of those i have to read next year that i bought earlier this year <laughs> which i'll talk about in another video because i have a video either coming up or already posted about audiobooks and so these are the audiobooks that I bought this year and stuff, and there's a couple of those. So I'll get back into that later. But that's all the questions. Woo, we did all 10 of them. We're spent. We as if like I'm multiple people. I am not. I'm just to clarify, I am not. I just I say we because like I'm including my husband in this because he's gotta edit this down from like, you know, 18, 19 minutes to so. I'm down for him. I include him in everything I do. It's just... All right. So here's my question. Have you done this tag? Are you going to do this tag? Have you heard of this tag? And if not, the link will be in the description below. I will keep raging at YouTube for not letting me copy and paste from my phone to the description on my phone to this because this had to be on my computer, which is why this is a little bit late because I had to format it. So that's it <laughs> this is my giving tag <laughs> video i hope you enjoyed it i encourage you to do it because i think it's important to talk about things but also to enjoy things during the holiday season no matter what the holiday is because it doesn't matter what your holiday is i think every holiday should have an element of giving into it because we all live in a community <laughs> and I will see you later.